Hey, um, so today I'm going to try and fix the uh, bugs that we came across yesterday, or last time, sorry. Uh, the bugs in question are that um, a user ID uh, doesn't deserialize when it's used as a key of a dictionary, uh, which we discovered could be fixed by creating a custom type converter, like so. Uh, but we don't want to just fix that, we want to test that the fix works. So we have our ID test uh, base class here, and we have some serializing tests. But what we're going to do is add another test which just checks when it's serialized as a dictionary key, as opposed to just a property, which is apparently different. Yeah, oh well, uh, yeah, it would be because this is deserializing. This is only serializing and not deserializing. So when deserializing. I spell that right? Deserializing, yeah. A, uh, as a key. So we'll have some JSON. And if we use a GUID, we should, I think, be able to use any kind of toggle. The previous, uh, any kind of ID. The previous test indicates so anyway. So. Let's do this. Uh, var id equals good dot new good. And then we shall form our JSON, which is just going to have, um, well, we need two of those because of escaping. <coughs> and then we'll just have a single key, which can be Oh, I suppose actually I'll go with a single key and that needs a value and we'll just have the value being, um, I don't know, test. And we'll do this var dictionary equals JSON convert. Deserialize and we'll deserialize it to a dictionary of. Now I think we've got the type available. Yeah, T string. And now our assertion can just be. Uh, actually, let's let's check everything on this. Mm, or do we? We don't really care what the ID, of the, what the value is. So let's just check the ID is what we expect. So dictionary should contain key. Uh, I guess we want to do parse ID. Now, if we go to our tests and just run all the unit tests, all of our different editor IDs, group IDs, user IDs and such should now all pick up this uh, new test in the base class. We should get a bunch of failures. Some failures in the handlers, that's weird. So we'll ignore that one for the time being. We're fixing these. Now the user ID passed. That's because our user ID has the right custom serializer on it. And these ones failed. But for some reason we're not getting any kind of text output. Ah, oh, there we go. And the scroll, the scrolling on this thing in presentation mode is not great. There we go. I could not convert string into dictionary key type. So we know that we need to go and implement that class. This, basically the same class as this on every single one of them. Um, the question is, can we make this generic? Mm. Yes, yes we can. So this is the only bit that actually matters. The rest of that doesn't need to be specific to this. So what we can have is just say, we'll have an ID type converter. We'll make it abstract. And then we'll have something like, um, now it returns object down here which is useful, which means we can just say, uh, we take in a, 
Actually, it's not taking anything. I might get away with doing anything less. No, we just need a single abstract method. So we'll have an abstract object uh, pars. And that's going to take in a string value. And that's it. And so instead here, we shall take this and call pars on string value. And now let's create a subtype of this. So I wanted to see if I can uh, avoid entirely having to create a subtype. Unfortunately, you have to pass a type in up here. If you could specify a, a non-compile time parameter to this, we could have just passed in a lambda that did the, uh, the parsing, but we can't do that. So public class user ID type converter, which is an ID type. I'm vaguely considering making a generic just because that's nicer. Eh. Nah. So implement a missing member, we'll delete the body of it and just do that. We don't need to cast that anymore because it's already cast a string for us. And that's it. <coughs> so this user will need touching but I can go back up here. If we go back to the tests, let's run just the things we care about. So that's that, 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 and that. Oh, so user ID still works, good. So let's move that. To a separate file. And yeah, let's leave that there for now. I think we might come back and refactor this as well because actually this can do the same thing because it's only that pars call that we care about. I wonder actually. No, let's do one thing at a time. Let's fix one thing, one thing at a time. That's probably an easier, a better idea. So because this is fairly similar, we'll just copy that. And we're now going to our toggle ID. And at the bottom, we should paste in that. So this is now a toggle ID type converter. See, that's why I wanted to make, I was considering making it generic because then I could force the type of this, but yeah, we might make it generic in a while. Now, what's this one's problem? Right, so this time we need to make it a GUID first, so we can pass that. And then we shall take this and again apply this to the class. Type converter. Type of. One of those. Good, and I just want to check that I didn't leave any bad white space in this one. I did, right, good, that's good. And then let's copy this class again because I think I overwrote what was copied. And we want to do the group ID. Uh, let's do control H, control H, group. Uh, don't know the keyboard shortcut for replace. The tooltip is not forthcoming, so we should just do that. Group ID does not need to be a GUID, so we should just get rid of that again. And an editor ID is basically the same as a group ID, so we'll just remove that. Uh, JSON, um, no, not JSON, type converter, type of group. Group ID, type converter. Did I apply that right? Um, I put the wrong converter there. No, I did put the right thing there. Did I? Right. And finally, editor ID. Hopefully they'll all 
pass this time. Much better. All right, let's just save everything and see what we've got. Now, if we have a look at what is pending to be committed, there is a scratch pad, which I think we changed last time. Yep, while proving that the uh, deserialization failed. So we shall remove that because I don't need that test anymore. And I certainly don't want to commit this, this scratch pad. So we've now got a new ID type converter, all three IDs, and a test. So we'll get add all of those. Use DC just to check that we haven't committed anything stupid. And we have uh, ID type converter. Right, that's that done. Nothing else is out of place, so let's add that in. Right. So, uh, IDs implement custom type. Converters for deserialization. In, I'm not going to say isolation, it's a silly word, and possibly one that I just made up. Now I've got three tests failing here, but I have no idea what for. That's weird. Should run it again. Hmm, and we haven't changed anything to do with that. But these are key not found exceptions. And now we have aggregate not found exceptions. So I suspect this is something that I missed when I did the last thing, but apparently the build still passed on that pair. Weird. Right, well, anyway, this shouldn't throw a key not found anymore. It should be an aggregate not found exception. When the tags and the toggle doesn't exist, that should be an aggregate not found exception as well. When the toggle doesn't exist, it should be aggregate not found. Run those. All right, now all the letters first. Add that, diff, and handlers, fix, test, missed, from uh, domain exception conversion. Hmm. Right, now the other error we had is that we wrote a toggle. Uh, so if we look at our storage here. So we wrote one of these toggles here. And as you can see, I switched it on twice, which it shouldn't have been able to do. And I also switched it on for a single user. But when we look at the view for that toggle, which is the C6 one here, the user is correct, but the anonymous state is incorrect, which is weird. So something didn't set the anonymous state, and I have no idea what. So it's either the projection didn't run, or, well, or the handler didn't apply the, yeah, I don't know. Let's have a look at the code before we and fix anything. So it'll be in toggle itself. And we set the state, we did change state for default. And we said apply event. If the state is on, do switched on for anonymous. And if the state is off, do switched off for anonymous. Now we know that worked because we have the event 
to made it to storage, which means this apply was called with the correct thing, which means the handler for this may have not run. So handle switching, new state on, new state off. Hmm. Well, those look correct. So it could be in the handle switching, but we do have a writing of the anonymous active state. Which is just being set to the new state as on or off. And it's publicly exposed. So the next likely thing, well, I suppose the easiest thing to do would be to just load up that particular um, event log and see what state we get. Uh, that's fairly easy to do. We so we say var fs equals new file system. Now we need oh no, not file system, a physical file system. Uh, var. Actually, I'm not going to make that available because I don't need to interact with that very much. We'll do that. FS equals new file system storage. This takes in a file system and a root path. Now, as I've got this file here, what I'm going to do is can you not copy path from here. Yes, yes, yeah. Just going to explicitly set the path like so. And then we'll say using var session equals fs begin session. Oh, and I suppose we need to actually register the projection first. Uh, register, uh, no, really. We'll register the builder. Yeah, so I'll call dot load from. So, because we're not going to look at the projection yet, we're just going to see if the actual toggle itself loads correctly. Uh, we're going to need to make this async. Because doing begin session, we should have awaited that. Now we can do session dot load. Oh, I could if I could type, which I can't. Load aggregate. Now that's a toggle, and that means we need a toggle ID. So we're just going to parse. And go ahead dot parse that. Uh, And that needs to be a weighted array offset. Yes, that's exactly what I need. I need an actual weight. Uh, so we need the good for it, which is that. So if we just rename this file briefly, copy that. So now what we want to say is toggle dot state. Let me just get the state of it. do is active. Yeah, that'll do. Now, can I just query it for not having? And call membership is active. Yeah, so we can just check by giving no user ID. That's fine. So user ID dot empty should be oh we need a membership uh, substitute for I group membership should be uh, false no it should be true because we switched it on twice right now. This will either pass, which will tell us that the projection didn't run, or it will fail, in which case something went wrong with the uh, event writing. Right. 
So that worked, which would indicate the projection didn't run. Or at least the projection of that event didn't run. Hmm. That's very strange. So let's have a look at this. We have to build this. They're passed into the file system storage session. Mm -hmm. And when commit is called, we take every pending event and do a lot of code to them. So we write each one to the file, which we did successfully. And then we took every event, put them into a single long list. And then for each projection, we ran the event through it. Once that was successful, we cleared our pending events. Hmm. Let's go back and have a look at this. The thing that I'm finding a bit weird is the fact that we had two of these events, and I was pretty sure I wrote code to prevent switching on the same thing twice. Like if it's already on, you shouldn't be able to be able to mark it as turned on. We can see here that they did happen. Is that nearly a minute apart? Okay, let's go back and have a look at the toggle. So when you say change state, now we literally apply it no matter what. Okay, so having multiple of the same event is valid. I might write a filter for that later, because I don't think I want to allow that. But anyway, so that's a valid thing to happen. So the question is, why did the projection not work? And the projection might have worked, but it might not have just written to disk successfully. So let's have a look at our projections. So that's the all top of projection. We have this memento here, which is a dictionary extreme toggle view. And we handle switched on for anonymous, switched off for anonymous, on for user, off for user, on for group, off for group, and tags added, removed, and the toggle created itself. Now, when it's switched on for anonymous, we do call switch on by default. Which then calls the handle switching method, which marks the new state. And we know this is all covered by tests anyway, so that part works. Maybe this doesn't. We take our toggles and we turn them straight into a dictionary. And the value is a toggle view. Which has a state view in it. Which has the anonymous state. Which has anonymous active. So it should be fine. Although it clearly wasn't. <coughs> Okay, so our next thing to do is to go back to our scratch pad and try this. Uh, let's register the projection. Like so. And what we should do instead is Place that root with uh, scratch. This will be relative to somewhere else. It's entirely sure where to be honest. I think the bin bin debug directory. Unless this moves it else. Oh, well. what we can do for that is just do uh, output still right line. Do path dot get full path scratch. Right now we know where our directory is in the output. 
So what we're going to do is Mm. Let's create a new toggle and then switch it on for anonymous. And as we're emulating what just happened through the, the API, we'll do it as two separate sessions. And I've just thought of a no, would that work? No, because then it wouldn't have saved it. I thought maybe it was the fact that a session wasn't calling commit, but when you dispose a session, that commits it anyway. And if commit wasn't called, we wouldn't have the event on disk. So it's working, kind of. So bar oh, toggle. Let's create a grid outside. Toggle toggle ID create new. You toggle the creator is uh, well, let's do that because we'll need an editor again later. Oh, add. Right, so what do we need here? We need the editor, we need a name for it. Uh, let's call it. Um, Test projection. Uh, it needs a description, although well, technically it doesn't. Um, I think that's it. Now we want to add it to the session. Uh, yeah, and that's it. And then doing using the var session equals await fs.begin session. So this is now representing our second rest request. So this time it would have loaded the toggle. So that'll be await session.load aggregate and it's a toggle and it has the ID of ID. And then we called toggle dot uh, change state, change default state. Uh, I was the editor again, and the default state was on. And again, we'll await session dot save. Now at this point, our in memory projection should have the same content as the disk projection. I think we're going to inspect the disk projection manually, but we can put an assertion in here as well. So we'll say, um, let's, rather than register that directly, let's do this like that. Uh, so here we can now say all dot toggles single state anonymous should be on. And either way, if this, if this passes, then it's probably something to do with writing this to disk. That's the problem. If this fails, then something in actually running the projection is at fault. Now this doesn't quite emulate what the REST API does. So we could be hitting an issue there as well, but it does fail. Hmm. That's weird. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm an idiot. Uh, we can't do that because we can't pass in a new toggle ID like so. So instead, we'll just do uh, toggle ID, toggle ID. Because calling create new generates its own ID. So we'll do that. And then here we shall do that. 
Alright, um, let's try that again. So passed. So we've got the file path here. So let's do this. Switch to PS code, open this directory. Now we've got two files. We want the most recent one, which is this one. So we've got toggle created, toggle switched on. And then we've got a view. If I hit Control Alt F, we get a pretty view. And we can see that Anonymous wrote correctly. Now this could have been down to the serialization issues we had with our user IDs and things. But I want to rule that out completely. So to make this, oh, is it closer to what the session? No, never mind, I was wrong. I was thinking that um, this wasn't emulating the REST requests very well in that I set up that we're using the same instance of the file system, the same instance of this projection. But in fact, in the, in the container setup, we register this lot as a singleton. So it's the same instance of the whole lifetime of the application. And this is an accurate representation. We begin session, we create a new one, we begin another session and we write to it. Hmm. So I suppose the logical thing to do is create a new toggle and then call it through the REST API again and see what happens. See if we've fixed the bug or what. So let's do run crisp in REST. All that starts up, we'll start up our uh, test RESTful service. You know what, I'm, I'm actually gonna use Postman. And the reason I want to use Postman is because I'm pretty sure I've already got the uh, requests in place. Yeah. Uh, I'll go away. No, I don't have them in place. Never mind. Won't use Postman then. Right. So, if we do a get to the base, and we've got two toggles, both off and also returning the wrong user and view state but we have had serialization issues so what i'm actually going to do first is uh delete the storage folder so R um, rm storage star uh, if we just do our ls storage good empty so start the api up again Now when we do a get to the root, empty, much better. Right, so we'll do our first thing, which is posting to this. We've got JSON selected here. We need to select text. And we need a name, which is gonna be uh, projection. I'll well, not, not call it that, we'll call it uh, projection test. I'm not gonna bother giving a description because that doesn't matter for this. So one created, we get a response header with our new URL in it. So we'll put that in there. And if we do a get to that, yeah, we've got anonymous off users blank groups blank. So the next thing we wanted to do was change the state. So we're gonna do a put to that slash state slash I can't remember what it was called. Uh, state controller. Clearly doing a mid search in the string was too much to ask. Default. And what was the model? So we have a model with this structure, state. And it actually wants to be a state, so we'll do that. Put that, yeah, I think that's right. No. Now I've forgotten to quote something. 
Uh, 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 uh. Oh, should actually select the body. Better. And Anonymous didn't write again. That's very interesting. That means our test was completely not right. But let's go and have a look at what was written back to our storage folder. Single event. Ooh, anonymous one. That's weird. Well, what happens if I now do a get? This might be because we've we're not returning the thing that we're writing, so it could be a eventual consistency type thing, but I'm not convinced. Still thinks anonymous is off. It's definitely one in the view. And I don't have the debugger attached either, that's annoying. Hmm, let's delete everything again and start again. This time with the debugger attached. Uh, that, stop. And actually, no, let's not do that. Let's start it with the debugger. And we shall debug us loading things. It's indicating the deserialization is the problem rather than serialization because we've got the right value written here. So what we want is our handler for loading a toggle. This is loading a single toggle, so get single request response handler. And let's stick a breakpoint here. Right. Let's minimize that out of the way. I don't really care about the stack trace at the moment, but we'll leave that there. Maybe it'll have something interesting. Right, so we want to locate a view. Let's actually step into this because this has got the, the magic of loading a projection. So we grab a projection, grab the path of it, which is an interesting path, but hey, It exists, so we load the thing, and we read all the JSON. And this is useful because I can now inspect that, just double check that it's got sensible content. Blah, 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 state anonymous one. It's definitely there. And now we deserialize. to the memento. Now, this might not debug because we don't have a runtime type. Oh, we do. Right. So we have a single, this is a dictionary, so we have a single item in it. And I get at the last hit. Well, thank you, that's useful. I want the actual content of your view. Oh, that's the keys collection. Mm. Right. So we've got a single view, an ID, a name, state, tags, and such. State, anonymous is off. Interesting. I wonder if it's failing to serialize and deserialize the enums correctly. Hmm. What are we doing for enums? We've got type name handling and formatting, but we're not specifying whether we want to use enums as. Well, that shouldn't make any difference. So we're not specifying that we want our enums serialized as strings. We're just serializing them as as integers, their keys. But if we go and have a look at the states. No. 
zero, one. What the hell is going on? Unless, of course, it's deserializing into something that's not publicly writable, and thus is never deserializing it. I suppose it could be. But we know we have a toggle view. And the state view is it's not technically writable. But that's why we have the memento. I'm very confused. What time do we have here? We have an all toggles memento. takes in the list of toggle view and I think this might actually be our problem because this can't be set by the serializer these can that can't I think we're going to need some tests to prove that our mementos are completely serializable and deserializable from any input. The question is, does autofixture support .NET Core yet? Because I don't want to have to manually specify all this data. Autofixture. And every time I check this, it doesn't. Last updated 60. Ooh, it's got an RC1 for 4.0. And I think that means it supports things. Yeah, we can use this. Good. Right. So, what we want to do is test that when our memento serializes, it serializes correctly, we have a string of JSON. We don't have any user stuff set, but hey, we can ignore that for now. Uh, but when it deserializes, it doesn't work. Now, what I want to do is test this with random content. Hmm. How do I do this? Because it's the memento that's the fault, the problem. I suppose technically I shouldn't be serialized. The views are fine. They should, should they be readable? Should they be writable? I mean, I mean, it's a view. That's the point. You can modify it. Would this all be solved if I did this? Make that get set. And made that. Like that. Because I mean, I don't mind if people write to these things, that's the point. Their views. Ah, uh, that's why. Hmm. So we just want the state. That's annoying. Hmm, I wonder. Could we add another method to this to let us populate from state view? But you don't know what a state view is. And nor should you. And you've got these because you have all the fun logic in about how to determine active activity state.
What I want is that when that's written, I want to recover that. Actually, we can do it if we undo all of this. And do this. I think you can do a lambda here now. I'm sure I saw somewhere with a, a lambda for it. New state view. Well, this is going to be horrible to write. To write. Users equals states dot user state groups equals states dot group. Right, so that's basically what we had before, but now we want to be able to do a set as well. Can you do that? That. Oh, okay. Hardly seems any point having that. Ah, well, we'll leave that for now. That's your problem. A parameter is not used. Well, it will be in a minute. So we're not going to make that read only anymore. And I'll push it Let's just say states equals new or state. Now, this is really careful about not exposing the content. So, oh. yeah. So, we just take this and go up here and say, uh, I don't know what order I prefer. Let's do anonymous first. So, Uh, states anonymous active that users that groups and then here we say users equals users Once we have our tests passing, we can then refactor this a bit and make it a little less unpleasant. Right. And what we could do here is now say uh, this uh, off. Oops. You think by the amount of time that I type on this keyboard that I have muscle memory for where my control keys are by now, but apparently I don't. Delete that, delete that, delete that. That looks right. What are you complaining about? I've deleted too many braces, that's why. Uh, let's put that on the same line as that and then do this. Yeah. Right, so now we can create a new version from our input. Hmm, well that's not very nice looking, is it? Well, let's see if it works. So it, uh, what's the skeletal phrase? Uh, progress over perfection. Debug. So now, hopefully, if we do a get to that toggle, we should get the right state back. Yeah, none of this would have been revealed from um, using the in-memory version of the of the toggle storage. 
because the in memory version doesn't have to deal with serialization. So I suppose you could make the in memory version better by making it deal with serialization by rather than storing actual objects, store strings of JSON. Might not be as efficient, but would make it more accurate, I guess. Right. Let's do a get request. Fingers crossed. I'm just gonna run it. I'm not gonna bother debugging it. Go away, just run. Nope, didn't work. Which is weird. I was kind of expecting that to work. I should have called the set method. I think. Well, let's set break bikes. Can I just set one here? Maybe. Yeah, we'll have one on building of the view. No, there's no point in having one building of the view because we've already built it. Maybe that's the problem. Alright. Uh, didn't want to do that. Oh well. Step into this. Right, load the projection. We'll load it from disk. Read the JSON. Double check the JSON is correct. It is. Nothing in our user one, but the important point is that we've got an anonymous set to one. So our memento. Let's have a look at that. Didn't hit any of our breakpoints. Uh, where's values? There it is. Nope. And we definitely did. I I did set a breakpoint on the toggle view, didn't I? Yeah. So it didn't call set on that. And I kind of expected it to. On the plus side, we have a string of JSON that deserializes, or should deserialize, which means we can write some tests. And then I have to keep rerunning the API just to do this. So let's write some tests. Is it an infrastructure concern? No, it's, it's, well. Mm. It is kind of to do with storage, but at the same time it is to do with serializing views and such. It could technically be a projection test. And we have some other tests here. So let's just use this, I think. Uh, can we serialize it nicely without having to do gymnastics things? I think so. Uh, when the Serializing. So, say projection to memento. So that's what we're going to serialize. Now, if we do Shift F12 and find usages of the generic version. Just want to check what I'm using for the for the serializer settings because they're not public. Formatting and time name handling. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, 
I'll just say settings equals that. Right, for JSON equals JSON convert serialize that with settings. Good, so we now have some JSON. But I think, do we have any default stuff projected into that view? No. And we probably should do. <laughs> so let's do this for our V our toggle ID. So we'll create a new toggle. So this is now emulating what we were doing earlier. And then we shall also consume a new toggle for switched on for anonymous, because that's what we were doing earlier that wasn't working. And that needs an editor, and then we have to pass the aggregate ID here. So we're now populated with the same data. So this string of JSON should be basically the same as this. And now we'll build a new view from it. Uh, Mento equals JSON convert dot deserialize object uh, string of JSON serializer settings. Now we're not specifying the type here. We could do, but I'm not going to because I want to rely on the same methodology as the you know, this is actually a file system to a uh, uh, storage test. Yeah, I'll leave it here for now. Might move this in a minute. So now that we have a memento, we then want to apply it to a new view. So our view, view projection, same thing. All toggles. View dot from memento. memento. And now we just want to say view dot toggles single dot state anonymous should be on. Right, let's see if that breaks. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, we then have issues elsewhere. Oh good, it does. And now we get to figure out why. I suppose we don't even need to consume that. What we can do is this as all toggles memento. Memento dot you stop that? Single value state do that. What I'm doing at the moment is just trying to reduce the test down to a smaller area as possible, which is essentially this bit. I wonder, I wonder if it's because it's, this is a, a complex key and we need a type converter again. The way to answer that question is to check if something more mundane on that property exists. Should be toggle one. Hmm. 
No? Okay. So it's not because it's a complex type. It's something to do with the property. So when it did, I really expected it to run this. Maybe let's change this away. To, let's do a statement body. Because then rather than setting a breakpoint on the whole thing, I can set a breakpoint on the line I care about. And we'll stick a breakpoint here because I want to run all of that and debug. Right. Well, so far so good. And then it just doesn't hit that property. Unless it's not writing to the property, it's just using the get side of it and it's trying to do a write to something that isn't writable. So what, what I mean is it's not constructing a state view somewhere and then passing it to this property. It's trying to populate the state property itself. We can verify that by making that return null, but Hmm, so it's using the new version of now, which means our set method is useless. Which means we are calling, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Because we're returning a new state view each time. Yeah, so it's calling it's modifying the state view. It's, it's doing effectively, uh, effectively doing the same thing as having uh, so far view equals new toggle view. It's effectively the same as doing this. And if you were to do this, I can, so let's go to the scratch pad a second. And we don't need all of this stuff anymore. So if you do this and then do view.state.arms should be on, this will fail. Or at least it better do. Yeah, because every time you call this state property, you get a new version of this back. So it is correctly reading the thing, it's just that we throw away the results every time because we don't store the rights to this view in any kind of permanent. How the hell am I going to get around that? I'm beginning to think this should have a view property on it. And then it would work. Ish. It would work <laughs> right up until the second that someone wrote to the view property. You only want to write for serialization. This is why we use Memento, so we can get around all of this. Well, on the plus side, it means I don't need this. Which means this can go back to this, which is at least marginally nicer to read. And this can be read only again. Hmm. 
So what are we going to do with this? Well, one way to deal with it would be to not have this store these collections at all. So rather than having properties, we pass an object into a construct and say, this is what you shall operate on. Because the basic thing is, this is also used toggle, toggle, in the toggle itself. This is astoundingly not good at finding the class called toggle CS, which is an exact match there. Right. Because we have this state object here, which is doing all of the handling and switching. And what do we do? And we return, do we? We don't even expose it anyway. I think this will work. Maybe. Let's just break everything and see how, how well this works. So we don't need that constructor anymore. And we don't need most of this constructor. Uh, state view. view. So we'll store that as read only field. And we'll get rid of these. And everywhere we say underscore users, we shall replace that with underscore view dot users. I think same thing for that. So obviously not users with groups. Really need to figure out what keyboard will guys for that. And instead of anonymous active, I can't remember what the view has for that. That, paste that on there, paste that on there, fix the 4 billion compile errors I've just caused by removing half the properties of this. That's lying, there are way more errors than that. Now, what we do here think this through save view no, it's mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get set on that, and we want this still, and we say state equals new state view, state. So now when any of the methods on this underscore states object are called, they'll be mutating the state view, which we are exposing here. Now this one is nice because we just need to pass the state view in here and we don't care about it, which I think as that's the behavior I want in this case. We do equals null. Right, so that should fix a few more compile sites. That's fine, uh, and then we'll have all the tests for the state breaking because they're probably asserting on properties that don't exist anymore. So we actually say here var view equals new state view. view. Yeah, it basically means that uh, normal usage of this still continues to hide what it's mutating. And it's only if you actually need the, the view. The 
because our actual toggle aggregate itself is it only really cares about the is active method rather than the whole whole thing. Let's take that. Dump that on there. That in there. Do this and this. Do that and that. I was expecting more compilation errors than that. Yeah, I don't care about that. Let's undo the changes to that. I don't have to get integration social on that. Source crispin dot tests scratch pad with an extra angle bracket. I don't actually bracket in it because I can't type. Right. So where did I put that test? Oh, mm, toggles tests. If we're lucky, this will work now. Because the whole thing is mutatable now. Yay, it works. And I don't think we've compromised any of the anti-mutation stuff that badly. The only time it really matters is for anything that actually passes a view in. And what I'm actually going to do is, rather than make that nullable, I will have a separate constructor. Like this. Because now I can do find usages on that, and find usages on that version, and now I can pick, figure out which is calling which. Of course, there's nothing to stop someone passing null in here. Well, I can solve that with a if view double equals null row new ane name of view. What do you want to do? Said, join null check with assignment. What? You can do that. Hmm. How very rubyish. I'm going to add a test for that as well. than the solution now because we've changed all kinds of things and who knows what I've broken. Knowing me quite a lot. Especially as it's Friday night and I'm beginning to feel quite tired. What are you doing? Is a Jasmine runner involved somewhere? Hmm. Where did that even come from? How did I get to that? No, I have no idea how I got to that. Yep, and lots of things look broken. Did those all actually run, or is that lying to me? Forty-nine broken tests. Whoops. Should probably fix those. <laughs> Stop it!
You think there's tests in it? Ah. Okay. It's trying to run my node tests. That's interesting. Didn't know I could do that. Then wanted to do that. Didn't know I could do that either. Every day is a school day. Right, now let's see what we've broken. Everything. Good. Mobile state tests. Could you minimize? Thank you. This scrolling of this window drives me demented. No reference exception. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, whoops, I'm, I'm an idiot. Probably be a good idea to initialize this to good defaults. Uh, anonymous equals off because that's where we defaulted to everywhere. Users equals a new dictionary of users and groups equals a new dictionary of groups. And let's rerun all the tests again. Go away. I have to figure out how to tell it to not do that because that's quite annoying. Only one test fails, routing tests. Oh yes, that's gonna fail because of the, the web API that we're <laughs> meant to be developing this evening. Right. Well, modify all the things. Right, where do we want to start? Let's fix that. All toggles tests. I'm still not sure if I if these are if these are uh, file system tests or not. What do we do to build the projection? Not a lot. I might move this to the file system. Because that way I wouldn't need to specify this. I could just call save. Or could I? No, because I'd have to actually write events into the right place. No, all right, I'm going to leave it here for now. Too longer of a git, git commit message, but I don't care. So, and who's going to stop me from writing long git commit messages if I feel like it? Right now that we've done all of that, I'm going to query it for real again because I want to check that it actually works, not that it just appears to work. Because unit tests are great, but it's quite a good idea to check the thing for real. So we'll do a get to this one. And anonymous is one. Great. So now if we do a put to see if I get this right to state. No, I can't remember what it is. State controller. That finds it this time. State users user ID. State users user one. Yeah. Oh, select the body. And we get the right result response there. So if we now go to the state endpoint and just do a get anonymous one, users, user one, one. Hooray, bugs fixed. Now, what were we doing before getting distracted by horrible things? I mean, I now technically want to and fix this so I get the roots. I want to make this a RESTful API, so I want the roots to actually come through. 
that would probably involve rewriting routing because I don't like them being specified in the routes but as attributes, so that's quite a long job. And probably not one for Friday night. Hmm. Let's do a tiny bit of JavaScript. Nothing like finishing the evening with some rage. So if we cd source, oh, we can close rider now. Ha, <laughs> close rider, this means that I'm gonna break something else. And go away. So cd source, brisbane.rest. Should be no changes, there aren't, good. Uh, npm run kill. My .net processes that are, oh, they're not actually running. That's nice. I need to figure out how to make that ignore the, uh, the output. Now oh, we'll do that later. Right, npm run, I think. Start, npm start. Yeah. See, I know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. You don't need to have any idea what you're doing, just as long as you have fun. I'm quite tempted to switch off all these deep net messages. But hey. Right, I never did use auto fixture. Oh well. Right, so if we refresh that. Buzz? It's buzzing at me. Uh, okay. Tweets. Don't care about tweets. There we are. Oh, and we've even got the right output here. So, what I'm thinking of is doing the, the expansion of this. What I want is to be able to click. I want this to be, I want this to be in light gray and a link. And then I click that and then I want the thing to expand a bit and have like a detailed breakdown of all the other states. And I have no idea how to achieve any of that. So let's start messing about. Now that's a toggle. Which means it's got an index. And let's zoom this in a bit so that people can actually see it. Could you? Thank you. Oh, damn it. Mm -hmm. Right, so we've got all this crap. Uh, right, what is this? Come on, can I? Is there a keyboard shortcut to actually hide that window? I mean, Control Shift E shows it, but I want to get rid of it. Like the same as doing. Oh, well, incredible. Anyway. So at the moment, I've got that one in line, but I think what we can do is have another component for it. Maybe. Is that a good idea? Maybe. Right, let's do another component. Uh, const toggle state. Oh, I'm looking at another thing called toggle state. Great. And I'm going to have an if statement in this. Oh, good, I've got lots of things called toggle state now. Uh, Let's let prettify much better. Ooh, hot reloading. Right, so we've got this toggle state thing. Now what we want to do is put this whole paragraph tag in there to start with. So let's change that to normal bracket. No, let's not change it to normal brackets because I know I'm going to want to do other things in a minute. So I'm just going to do return. Brackets that, brackets that, control F, that did not format it as I was expecting it to. Now I added an editor config. Maybe that's why. And I guess this isn't telling prettier that I want 80 columns. It's my maximum. Uh, editor config. Max by length. Is that is that right? Property. Max line. 
Or says hi by my pinging off the map. Off to turn it off feature is off. Uh, off uh. mm, doesn't mention VS Code. I'm hoping that, that it will just work with prettier. Not to a config. Now, the question is, do I have to reload the editor or does that just take effect? Can I just, can you just reload the editor somehow? Oh well, just ignore that for now. Anyway, save that. Should still look the same. Bad things. Ah, yes, would probably help if I actually included the damn component. And it needs some state on it. State equals state. Like that, maybe. And then I only really care about it. Right, that bit needs to belong in here. Good, maybe. Now, as I only care about users groups and anonymous, can I just do anonymous users groups? And use the deconstruction, destructuring, deconstruction. Ah, oh, whatever. Use magic. Maybe that will work. No oh, errors instead. Good. It looks valid to me. Clearly, I am wrong. Cannot convert undefined or null to an object. I bet it's that. Maybe you can't pass it like that. Oh, maybe you have to do double destructuring. I don't know if that's a thing. It's very much not a thing. Is that a thing? Can I do double destruct? Uh, Java script double destructure. It's fine, but I want to get a, a sub object. <laughs> Nested objects on array destruction. That's what I'm after. Oh, what? So that's the name you want to give it, and that's the property. Inside extra square brackets. So, maybe that. 
Oh, my head. Yes. Okay, good. That's pleasant syntax. What was I doing again? Apart from losing my mind. Right, so what we're going to say is we're going to split this out. And we'll say if specific states is very, very equal to zero. You'll never be too sure what your script is. Is it three you need these days? I'm surprised they haven't got four yet. Wait, is there a four, four equals a quality operator in JavaScript? I think there's one in PHP. Mental. Right, so if it's one of those, we shall return default prettify that. I still haven't figured out a nice auto close tags uh, thing. Might want another toggle actually. And I've shot Rider, so I'm going to use Postman to create another one. So I've got a couple of different states. So I want one with default off and then one with default on and no other states. Go away, I will update you at some point. Post body state on. No. I'm going to create one first. Post body raw JSON name is two. Good. And three. And now if I just do a get to that, should get all of them back. And if we refresh that, we'll eventually put something in so that it automatically keeps these up to, up to date. Uh, and let's switch number two on. Do that. Put that one. On that slash state. Uh, what was it? Default, I think. Apparently. Good. Now we've got a little bit of test data. Now go away again. All right, so now that we've got that, we don't need this in here. We don't need the question anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dollar one other states. Ah, don't need the dollar anymore, do I? It's not a, a JavaScript replacement string. It's a magic replacement string. Right. So now that we've got that, that's the default state. So when we register this, what we actually want is. We'll do an href to nowhere to start with. And we'll end 
that there. Uh, right. I don't know what to do next. Let's say uh, const on uh, details e no, equals e. I can't really remember what this e dot prevent default. I think maybe, and um, we'll have. Uh, let expand because this doesn't need to persist anywhere. Uh, we'll say expanded equals not expanded. And then here. On click JSX attribute, yes. And just because I have no idea what I'm doing, really, uh, I'm just going to failed to put that in the right place. Expanded. Right. Hmm. Why doesn't that work? in doubt, so I don't have the right add-ons installed yet for this, but we'll do that. I don't think I've got the React DevTools here. No, I haven't. Well, that's working at least. I'm sure I could just do stupid state things in here. Maybe I need a component for that. Or font details. If in doubt, just make more components. Span. Just <laughs> now that I pass that in, I think that makes magic happen. Bloody JavaScript, magic everywhere. I don't like how long this line is getting, but not a lot I can do about it at the moment. Can't just write that to the screen. Well, now it's weird, undefined. What is there? I don't know. 
Maybe I do need a component. Well, yeah, I, I thought I could just echo state like that. Because it is a property of another component. Oh well. Can I do that without how how mind sensitive is this? I can't remember. Such a long time. Uh, all right. Okay, that doesn't change the life. Good. What is printing out stuff? I mean, it's me. I don't know. I don't know. I did something, but. Group client main server index.js probably that yep that's good let's get rid of that uh, let's open a second console window so I can leave that running Dev projects postman uh, source postman dot rest uh, client app boot uh, web UI remove random right line good. Hmm, let's try making this component. Because I have every idea what I'm doing. Uh, uh, forgotten how to make components. Class toggle state extends component. Things. That's surprising. That's still toggling true and false. But now that we're doing that, we can now call this dot set state. Good. Is super, is that how you do it? Do I have to pass the props in? I can't remember. I'm not going to bother. Let's see if that does anything. No, apparently I don't have to pass props in. Okay. Uh, this dot in state. How do you do the initial state? Maybe you do just set it in here. Uh, expanded false. Give me warnings. No warnings, it's good. Maybe. Right. So instead of that, we get rid of that. And we now say 
this dot set state expanded equals this dot state dot expanded but not and then for bedevilment we shall say I am this dot state dot expanded that's true say expanded hiding errors not errors yeah I know what I'm doing <laughs> Right, what's I actually trying to do when I was doing this? I feel like I don't even need to set the initial state because it's just it's just a boolean. I think I can get away without it. Huh. It actually cares that it can't read a property. That's interesting. Type safety in JavaScript. What the hell? Uh, right. And now everything's broken. Maybe if I refresh it, it'll not be broken. Hmm. Good old JavaScript. Right. So now that we've got that. We don't need that let expanded. And I think what I want to do is say move that up to there. And if I remember correctly, I have to bind these functions and say this dot on details click equals this dot on details click dot bind this for reasons. I think you have to do that still. You mean he is oh, okay he, he might not be defined right i'm going to comment that out and see if i actually need it i think i need it a vague recollection of needing it yes i definitely need it Which is stupid, really. But hey, it's JavaScript. We expect stupid. Right, so we don't want that there, really. So we say if that. What did I just delete? Oh, yeah, okay. So instead of this text. What we should do is have our uh, const link text equals that. Should be no different. And instead, we should now say if this dot state expanded otherwise ah. and for this we shall say hide
quite details. Yeah, that's basically what we want, except we want a space. <laughs> we don't want space there. Uh, we want space here. You want some details. So let's say render details. Don't really want this in a paragraph anymore. I think I need a span around that. Maybe that should be a paragraph. No, that. This. Just returning null, so it shouldn't do anything either way. Good. And now in here, we actually want to render our details somehow. So we'll grab that as the properties. And now we want some kind of details, but I don't really know what. Column for users, column for groups, column for default. No, that doesn't make sense. I think we'll just do a list for now. And we'll do return ul. And then do users map user. Is a I list item and list item. Oh, damn it. Uh, yeah, I can't remember if there were properties in that or not. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, and then we need to set the key so the React doesn't shout at us. So I'll just use the index for that. We'll technically use the user ID, I guess. And then after that, we'll do that again, but this time we shall map the groups. Let's see what that does. Probably break. Users.map is not a function. No, it probably isn't because it's a dictionary. We want that. 
there. So it's not just the key we want, we want the index as well. Actually, we can use the key. Oh, user ID is unique, so we'll do that. And then the value is source key. And I think I want to call pretty, pretty file on that. Yeah, definitely isn't doing as much prettier ink as I feel it should be. Right, so now here I can say map users map groups. And now you'll just work. Cannot read property current element of null. Can't you now? I wonder what the actual error is. We don't want to render that always. Now I could wrap that in an if statement here, or I can cheat and do this if not expanded return. Should probably actually print the name. Uh, we'll say the prefix Prefix in, we'll wrap that in brackets and say prefix. And here we now say user. And here group. User, user one. Oh. Yeah. Not drastically pretty, but it'll do for now. I might make it a list unstyled though. Class name equals list unstyled. Until I think of a nicer way of doing that. That'll do. It's functional at least. Start or JS. Hmm. Oh, stop being such a right. Yeah, CM web UI add toggle details expansion. Right, now that we've done that, we should just do a microscopic bit of refactoring and then I am definitely going to bed because my head hurts a lot. Hopefully it's only this component we're calling Prettify in.
It is. I want to put that prettify inside here, but I don't want to prefix it with this every time. So I'm not going to. Uh, we'll take that component. Uh, shift Control E. E file. File state. Oh, I added an edit config. Maybe that will automatically add the new line. It does. Now we delete that comment because that's no longer helpful. We need that back in here, except we don't need the component anymore. And now we need to import toggle state from dot slash toggle state which would work, except we're not actually exporting anything. Export default toggle stuff. Let's refresh it, because I'm not quite sure I trust top module reload. Nice. Thank you. Add client app. I get this word wrong so many times that I confuse myself and then correct it back again. Set R8, because one of them doesn't exist and it's just a common misspelling. I'm going to ignore that get config file, uh, edit a config file, because I don't think it's being helpful. But that's what I'm going to do for this evening, because I'm now really tired and I've been streaming for, what, just over two hours? That's enough for anyone. So if you've got any questions, feel free to send me a message. Um, I'm at Ponderdom on Twitter. Uh, there's links below the video to all of me everywhere. Um, yeah, tune in again tomorrow for more raging in JavaScript and other fun shenanigans. Thanks for watching and see you next time.